Hi, geotechnical explorations are mandatory for any building project. However, soil testing and soil reports are not given the required importance by many clients who build. Many think that soil exploration is a structural engineering scope. While it is very important that structural engineers and consultants are aware of the basic and fundamentals of soil mechanics, soil mechanics or geotechnical engineering is a separate discipline and a specialist soil consultant or a geotechnical consultant should be on board for any project. Hi all, this is Premjit here from civilera.com. I will break down a few tips for civil engineers on how to interpret soil reports. I will take you through a soil report and I will also explain you a very important aspect when you have compressive soil. Please ensure you read the blog in addition to seeing the video. The reason is that in the video I am explaining mostly on the compressive soil and on taking through the soil report but then in the blog I am writing a lot more on various result interpretation on soil. Let's get into a report. I will first show you one report and then take you through that. So let me quickly take you through this report. So here you can see the soil report contains an introduction, a scope of work and various points. So if you look at the summary, there is a summary given here which is a table of contents and it explains that this contains introduction, scope of work, objectives, laboratory testing procedures, schedule of investigation, watch table, recommendations and calculations and so on. You can also see an appendix which is not at all less important. It's as important as the other things where you have laboratory test results. You have a borehole location plan shown there and bore logs. All these are really important and I will quickly take you through these. So in the introduction section, it says what the project is, what is the kind of building it is and what kind of scope the consultant has and it is summarizing that what kind of tests are going to be done in this particular report. So that's written here grain size analysis and various things. Then he's taking you through objectives and scope of work where it includes something called determination of the nature of the deposit of soil, determination of the depth and thickness of various soil strata and so on. So it's directly readable. It gives you every information about the objective. Now the scope includes investigations, it includes laboratory tests and producing a report. Even that will be clear enough. You can directly read that. I don't have to spend much time on explaining these. Any soil report, if you get that, you will be able to firm that up. In case if you want this report for reference, you can always write back to me. Now section 3 here explains how the field investigation is carried out. It says how the sampling is done and the borehole depths for each of the holes. Now 3.3 explains how the SPT is done. It's adhering to IS2131 and various aspects are mentioned here which most of you will be aware of. SPT is a very standard test which most of the site and structural and geotechnical engineers are familiar with. Now. In many cases there might be water table and if there is any it will be reported here as well. So it says seepage water has not been observed which means that the water table is not really high. Section 5 is subsoil profile and there is a reference to a schematic plan for the location all these we are going to see in some time. And here there is a summary on the bearing capacity which is very much needed if it is an isolated footing and then we have to go through SBC and then size the foundations. So here at various depths you are given the SBC for 25 millimeter settlement and the section also includes a recommendation and conclusion which says that a three layered subsoil has been observed and it also says the minimum depth of foundation and it also says what can be the SBC there at 1.5 meters. Minimum depth of the foundation from natural ground level for the other boreholes. So all the location values are given and the recommendation is open foundations of type isolated is recommended based on the soil strata. And here there is a recommendation for providing soiling of about 200 millimeters. So all these are important. The site needs to execute this. The soiling needs to be provided below the foundation. The consultant also recommends for further 
investigation in case if there is any variance in the soil strata at site when actual work is executed so all these are important to note and do as per this now it says the stability of foundation needs to be looked into wherever there is loose pocket of soil encounter it may be necessary to increase the depth of foundations and so on so all these are to be looked into carefully and then it needs to be adhered to refilling of foundation shall be done with care so as to not to disturb the constructed foundation and shall be compacted in layers all these are recommendations and this needs to be stick to and there are some precautions also mentioned here the column should be tied with rcc beam at plinth level and about the loose pocket so all these points are to be looked into and then adhere to when we are doing that so there are appendix here which gives you the laboratory test results it gives you the grain size distribution it gives you the engineering properties like shear strength and also bulk and dry density of the soil and here it shows you the borehole plan which is very clear the site is large and there are three boreholes in the site and it is in a diagonal manner so that the entire stretch is covered to left and right and also along the leg length and here you have the grain size distribution curves so this gives you an idea on the profile so the soil report can be even more elaborate depending upon the importance of the project and the site and uh, it can contain more information in a more detailed manner this is for a mid-scale project in Bangalore where the soil conditions are fairly good so in this manner you can look at the entire soil report and understand the various parameters including water table and SBC of soil and various things that I just showed you now I'm going to show you another soil report which is in a more challenging conditions which is a compressive soil so that's where I want to explain a bit more and then tell you what care or what understanding you should have about foundation engineering so here I have attached yet another soil report here this time I have shown only a bore log here for explanation and there is a recommendation as well I have kept so you can see here in this report type of boring rotary drilling and then you can see here groundwater table one meter below ground level so there is water at one meter below ground level next you can see here the description of the soil sand black and thickness two meter depth two meter and here at one meter your n value is three and at three meter that is another one meter two plus one is three then you have again n value three so this is very poor soil and at another two meter that is total five meter you have 23 to 24 as n value which is good now what i want to explain is that as you go down your n value is increasing which means your sbc is also increasing your soil is becoming better as you go down it's harder as you go down now at 8.2 meter you can see another behavior where your n value is coming back to 3 2 and 2 which means that you have a very poor clay sand here after 8.2 meters so this is where you have to be careful because after a certain height i think in this case it is after 5.2 meters that is 3 plus 2 5 5.2 meters you have again poor soil and this is where you have probability of compression or settlement so let us see the recommendation from the consultant in this at a depth of 3 meter and a size of 2 meter by 2 meter isolated footing safe bearing capacity 18 tons per meter square can be used in sand with n value greater than 23 so this is the sbc recommendation by the soil consultant now this needs to be looked at very carefully two meter by two meter and 18 tons per meter square now many young engineers think like okay two meter by two meter is giving 18 tons per meter square and people generally ignore the size given there this size given there has some significance which i am going to explain right now let us consider that we have a load of around 1620 kilonewton on one particular 
column and then your SBCS weather report is 180 kilonewton per meter square and let us consider that this P is inclusive of all the sulfate and everything and then you need to consider this so this is the unfactored load so your area is 1620 divided by 180 which will give you around 9 meter square and I'm considering the base to be pinned and there are no moments to be taken care of so let's assume that 9 meter square is needed and if it's a square footing you will have 3 meter by 3 meter requirement now the question is can we give this as a solution we have met the area requirement we have taken care of the load now my question is can we give 3 meter by 3 meter footing so if you have something like 3 meter by 3 meter footing then approximately the pressure bulb will be around two times that of the width so if you have this as 3 meter it's likely that your pressure get dissipated at a depth of around two times the width this is a approximate rule that i'm talking so this 2b could be something like 6000 millimeter or 6 meters which means that your pressure is dying down only at that depth which is around 6 meter now what is the problem with that now if you see the report here if you place your foundation at this level which is 3 meter from the existing ground level then your pressure bulb is likely to cross this particular height which is 5 meter if you are if the size of the footing is more than about 2 to 2.5 meters so that's the reason the consultant has given the size 2 meter by 2 meter if your size is more than that then it is likely that your pressure bulb will get into this area where your end value is very less and the soil is soft and compressible so if you give 3 meter by 3 meter footing then there are chances that you will have issues with the compressive soil so that's the reason the width is restricted to 2 meters so what you have to do your scheme needs to be robust your scheme should account for this and then ensure that your column loads are within limits so you might have to arrange your columns you might have to have number of columns decided based on this particular behavior of soil you cannot afford to have as much size as you want even if the footings are not clashing even if you are not having very close by footings even then if you are closing this particular size then you may have to attend to that and ensure that you have more columns and then reduce the load into a level where your foundation sizes are not crossing to meter so that is the meaning of this particular statement in your soil report so i wanted to explain this to you today this particular point on compressive soil we will come back with another aspect on soil mechanics some point in time later so i hope you enjoyed this video thank you for watching and ensure that you read the blog as well and then also please share and like the video and the channel thank you very much for watching